Yeah, and so we will be recording. So if you're having tech issues or you miss something, you can always go back and watch it. We'll put it on our YouTube channel. Um, all right. So the only other housekeeping thing I want to go over is that if you want to have a record of um, your participation in these webinars, make sure that you're registered for them on the online registration system. So make sure that each one of the members, even if you're on the same Zoom call together, you still should make sure that both of you are registered in the registration system. So you can either ask your parents to do it or if you do it, just make sure that you are all registered so that you have, um, so that you'll have a record of it on your profile that you took this. Um, all right, so I'm going to get started. I'll share my screen and open up our presentation for tonight. Um, and Tracy, if someone asks a question, just interrupt me because I won't be able to see them. Okay, so tonight is our Made in Alberta activity. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me if you're having difficulty or I'm breaking up, let me know. Uh, this is under our sustainable agriculture and food security pillar, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but first, I want to start with the 4-H pledge. So if everybody can stand up and we'll do the pledge. Let me fix this. Okay, let's do it together. I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty my hands to larger service and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country and my world. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, and then we, I just wanna do some sponsor recognition. So our 4-H Alberta programs would not be um, possible without the generous support of our partners and supporters. Without their help, we would not be able to provide our amazing, fun and engaging youth programs that we do. So I want to say a special thank you to our provincial sponsors for this program, the, um, our Diamond Clover sponsor, the Government of Alberta. Thank you. Um, the, our Emerald Clover sponsors, Alberta Recycling, Altalink, ATB Financial, Calgary Stampede Foundation, and UFA. Thank you. Our Gold Clover sponsors, AFSC, PV Mart, and Save on Foods, and our Bronze Clover sponsors, Gas Alberta Inc., Olds College, and Nutrient. Thank you for your support. Thank you to our partners. If you see them out in their, your community, make sure you give them a big thanks uh, because they're the reason we can run these programs for you. All right, so we're going to start off with an activity really quickly, um, and we're going to go find something made in Alberta. So I have an example here. I have some fresh farm eggs. So what um, we get them from a local farm nearby and we give them our old store bought cartons and then they fill them with eggs from chickens from their farm. So if you have any product that's made in Alberta um, in your house, go find it now and then we're going to uh, talk about them a little bit. I'll give you guys like five minutes or so. If you're already back, you can type in the chat what you have. Oh, you, I, Eugene, and I see you guys have some eggs. Uh, I see lots of people have eggs. Type it in the chat so we know what you guys have, and then um, we're all going to hold them up together so everybody can see. Wow, that's awesome, everybody. I love seeing all this. Type it in the chat what you brought back, and then we'll all hold it up once everyone's back to... Uh, to see an avocado tree, that's very cool. I tried growing an avocado tree, but I didn't, wasn't very successful. Honey, beef, awesome. I hope it's for each beef. Cereal, it is awesome. <laughs> Lots of eggs, hey, that's a really common thing. Based on perfect, you guys. Keep typing in the chat what you, what you got. And then I wanna, and yeah, you guys can hold it up. Wow, I see, I love the eggs straight from your chickens. Ground beef, yeah, awesome. Some bread I see, honey, salsa, that's really good. Whipping cream, a mask, that's awesome. Very creative, I like seeing the things that aren't edible too, that's awesome. Wow, oh, that's so cool. Ashlyn, what are you holding up? I can't tell. 
Ashlyn and Tyson, I don't know, but it's fermented homemade garlic. Oh, yum. <laughs> That's awesome. Great, you guys. Yeah, type it in the chat and show it on the screen if you want to. Um, if you're okay, I'm going to take a few screenshots so that we can look at them later and see everything that you guys have. That's awesome. Actually, Suzanne, would you mind taking screenshots? Thank you. And posting them somewhere. Okay, guys, hold up everything that you have right now that you got. And Suzanne's going to take some screenshots of what we have. Here's all my eggs. I'll count you down so everybody can smile so we don't have goofy. Well, our goofy faces are okay. Are you ready? <laughs> One, two, three, smile. Okay. It's fun. Thanks, Suzanne. Thanks, everybody. That's great. So it looks like we have tons of different products from um, Alberta. I love seeing like the potatoes and everything. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go, we're going to go back and um, just talk a little bit more about our leadership pillars. And then we have two more activities that I want to get to. So let's do that right now. Thank you for participating. That was great. If it's milk, put it back in the fridge so it doesn't go bad. <laughs> or ice cream so it doesn't melt. Um, okay, I'll just give everybody just one more minute to clean up a bit and then we'll move forward. I should put my eggs in the fridge right after this because I have to share them with my whole family and they'll be mad if they go bad. So <laughs> they'll be fine though, they're eggs. <laughs> okay, all right, let's get going. We'll get to our next little bit. So I just want to talk about our leadership development pillars briefly. Um, and just to clear up a little bit of confusion that I got a few questions about our uh, classrooms. So what we're doing with these member opportunities is we're creating a classroom for each one of these pillars, our community engagement and communication, science and technology, environment and healthy living and sustainable agriculture and food security. So we've already done our science and technology activity and we've created the classroom for that. And I sent an email out for you guys, but if you have questions at the end of how to access it you can ask me um, and we're going to continue to post things that have to do with science and technology so for example um, maybe some coding activities and maybe something that would have to do like science experiments you can do at home and we're going to start posting anything like that in the that classroom so it's important that you're a part of each classroom um, so we have a separate classroom for tonight and that's going to have um sustainable agriculture and food security on it. Did I draw that? Maybe, maybe I have annotate on. <laughs> Tracy, do you mind figuring out how to erase it? I'm not sure if I'm the one who did that or not. Um, okay, so each one of these pillars represents things that <laughs> we can, um, that covers 4-H. So everything we do in 4-H fits into at least one of these pillars, sometimes multiple pillars. And tonight we're um, talking about sustainable agriculture and food security. And I know that's two big words that maybe if you're one of our younger members, you've never heard of before. Guys, if you don't mind, I don't know how to stop annotating, but I think I can clear it one second. Okay, I'm, I don't know how to stop that, but that's okay. Okay, please don't annotate right now. I can give you some drawing time later if you'd like, Trip. Um, okay, so I want to start by talking about uh, what um, sustainable agriculture is. So it has three main parts of it. Um, the one part is economic. So a sustainable farm is profitable and it um, contributes positively to our economy. So it makes money for the farm and it helps uh, make money for our province and um, it keeps products within our province so we don't have to spend our money outside of the province. So it's good for keeping our money here. 
Um, it's also got uh, sustainable farm has a good social uh, component to it. So it has a really good strong relationship with the surrounding community, which we really focus on in 4-H is going out and talking with your community, getting involved and a sustainable farm uh, will provide food for the community, provide other products for the community. Um, it supports its community and the community supports it. And it also treat all of its workers fairly. And then it has an environmental aspect of this as well. And this is a big part. This is the one you'll probably hear most in your lifetime is environmental sustainability. Um, so it practices uh, good environmental stewardship and it doesn't have any bad lasting impacts on the environment. Um, the goal of it is to produce the most products that it can while um, harming the environment the least amount. So I have some examples and they're gonna seem like maybe big words, but I'll break it down so it's really simple. And some of you've probably heard of this. And if you live on a farm, you probably do a lot of these things. But here are some examples. Okay, so our first example is rotating crops and embracing diversity. So um, you won't grow the same crop every year. You usually rotate. And this is gonna really depend on where your farm is located. So uh, I'm over by the Rocky Mountains close to Cochrane in Alberta, and we have a short growing season and it gets cold fast. So um, there's only certain crops that'll work here for our weather and our environment. So we obviously, there's some some crops we can't grow but every year we change it out and farmers are always looking for new crops that they can grow in their area and it really helps with uh, the soil making it healthier. Um, I'm, so we want to reduce or eliminate tillage as well. So this is another thing that depends on where your farm is, but some people can go without tilling their land and breaking it up. Um, and this preserves the soil, preserves the moisture. And it's also, even if you still have to break it up, depending on where you are, um, reducing the tillage, which is a really common practice now is really important. So if you have any questions about this, maybe you can ask if you have any family members who are farmers or maybe you know a bit about it too. So it's um, good to share with your community so that they know about it. Um, so this controlling runoff, all this means is that you wanna make sure that um, when you are placing where your livestock are gonna be or where your manure is kept or your feeding, um, you don't want it close to a water source so that any of the dirt and <laughs> manure and things from your livestock doesn't run into your well or a local stream or something like that. So creating a buffer area from where your livestock is. Um, this is similar for water sources and pesticides, just making sure, because you need pesticides obviously um, to help your, with your crop, but just having a buffer space between where you're applying your pesticides and where the water is so that it doesn't run into the water. And um, manage grazing to maintain native grassland. So this is a common thing that's starting to be more popular as the years go on is um, bringing back some native grass where uh, your livestock is grazing. And there's a lot I could go into in this, but um, I'm sure that you have family in your area or some farmers who could talk to you a little bit more about this if you have questions. And also using renewable power sources. So the this would be like um, solar or wind or something like that. And obviously all of these are really determinant on how much um, money you can put into them. The, a lot of them are really expensive and it also depends on your location. So a lot of farms can't do every single sustainable <laughs> agriculture, but there it's a lot of people are really embracing it and moving toward because it actually helps with how much you can produce on your farm. It's actually really good for it if you can do some of these things. Um, and then I want to talk quickly about food security and all food security is, is that everyone um, is, has access to food, to healthy food, to keep them nutri or to have nutritious food and healthy food to keep them going and whenever they need it and it meets their basic needs. So um, supporting farmers in Alberta allows us to have more food in Alberta that's easily accessible for everybody in Alberta. So we want to support our farmers. Um, so this is, I talked about this a bit already, but how does sustainable agriculture and food security relate to this activity that we're going to do today? 
Um, we want our Alberta farms to be sustainable so that they can be successful and continue to provide for us for years to come. And the more we support them, the more they can be sustainable and support us and provide us with food security. And Alberta farms produce food for, you, for us that is easy to access and supporting our farmers supports all Albertans. So here's our next activity and we are gonna be breaking into breakout rooms for this. So I just wanna pause if anybody has any questions or comments, now's the time to do it before we start our activity. Um, Tracy, let me know if there's questions because I can't see the chat. No, we're good so far. Okay, perfect. So um, what we're going to do, this game is called the supply chain game. So I'm going to give you a product and you guys are going to have to come up with its supply chain progress. So when, from when that crop or product is first made and everything that goes into it before it gets onto your table. So before you buy it from the store. Um, and I'm gonna give you an example quickly with apples. Oh, okay, so here is an example and yours don't have to be as in depth as these, it's kind of up to you. Um, but you can see that it starts, it shows where the seeds and the fertilizer and the water and everything you need to grow an apple tree, um, where it's grown and that it's harvested. Um, it also has where you can get the boxes to store the apples and where you get the labels from and then how it goes through to the store and then to you. So this is obviously there's a lot of branches in this, but what we have is um, a few different few different ones that we're going to do and I'm going to split you off into breakout rooms and you each are going to come up with your own flow chart for this product and how it gets from the farm how it's made all the way to you the customer buying it from the store and all of these products are products that are produced in Alberta so our first one is going to be milk um, we're also going to do oats we're going to do potatoes and we're going to do eggs so oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to stop my screen share and we're going to split you off into breakout rooms. So there's all ages on here. So if you're a senior member or an intermediate, I need you guys to act as leaders. Um, if you're in a breakout room and um, there's questions, let me know. You can uh, rate, you can ask for help in the breakout rooms and I can come in and give you some guidance. So we're all working together in these breakout rooms to make our flow chart. The best way for this is to designate someone who's gonna draw the flow chart out. Um, you can all draw it, but we want one person who's going to be able to show us at the end what they did in their flow chart. Does that make sense? Thumbs up everybody, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna sign you guys breakout rooms. Um, okay, so breakout, if you're in breakout room one, you're going to be doing eggs. Breakout room one is eggs. Um, breakout room two is oats. Breakout room three is milk. And breakout room four is potatoes. Um, if you forget which one you are, let me know and I'll come in and I'll tell you. So Maddie, there's just a couple of questions on how that breakout room works. So oh, yeah. um, if Sorry, you can I just, just explain that how you're gonna get them and what's gonna happen on their screen and then how you get back. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make four breakout rooms. And when I click go, it's going to push you into a breakout room. So you shouldn't have to do anything. It'll just automatically put you in a breakout room. And then you're and all it's doing is just dividing you guys up so that you're in four different screens. So you can talk amongst everyone in your breakout room. And then um, when we're done, I'm going to click end and it'll close them all and push you back here. So there isn't much you have to do. Uh, the only thing is that you can ask for help if you need help. Um, there, there's a button in the breakout room that says ask for help. 
And if you can't see it, hopefully someone in your group can. And then I will get a notification that you need help and I can come back in. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna create them now and hopefully this all works for everybody. Okay, everybody, welcome back. So um, yeah, what we're gonna do, I'm trying to think of the best way to for you guys to be able to show um, what you have um, so that I can, Okay, so if you guys want to be able to see the person who's explaining their flow chart um, on the top right hand part of your screen, if you're on a computer, I'm not sure if you're on an iPad, but there'll be an option to click view. And then you can click on speaker view, and then that'll show whoever is talking so um, or it should right now for me it's showing Tracy so. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that, but hopefully it shows the person who's speaking. And so um, whoever's speaking and showing the flow chart, turn off your mic and the rest of us will mute ourselves and hopefully it'll bring you front and center so that we can see your flow chart. Um, ideally, that is what's gonna happen. So um, we're gonna do breakout room one. Oh, do you guys have any questions before we start or is it okay? I think Elizabeth did have a question there. Um, She's just trying to get unmuted. Uh, I drew the flow chart, but someone else is presenting it and talking about it, so. Okay, okay, that's all good. As long as, <laughs> I don't, let me think about that. Which breakout room are you in? Four, the potato one. The potato one, okay. So we might just have to flip between the two of you for a second, but. Um, maybe we can get you, Elizabeth, to start when it's your turn. You can just show it and for a bit so we can all see what you put. And then um, whoever's presenting can turn on their mic and start speaking about it, if that is okay. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so I'm going to mute myself. We're going to have breakout room one who did the eggs. You guys are going to show your flow chart first. So whoever is presenting that can go. Um, okay, hi. So this is um, breakout room one. Um, our this is our our flow chart. It's I don't know if you guys can see. It's very well drawn. So it's right. It's the farmer, and then the farmer grows the wheat, and then the farmer feeds the wheat to the ch like the chicken. Then the chicken lays the egg. The, we package the eggs and then we ship the eggs to the store and then we sell the eggs. So. Awesome, well done. I like the inclusion of the food source. Uh, that's awesome. Really good job, you guys. Do you have anything else to add other than you're in a tropical vacation? No? <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good background, very applicable. <laughs> okay, um, let's get breakout room two who did oats. Uh, you can go. Remember to unmute yourself if you're breakout room two and you're it's presenting. It's Cameron. Is she maybe being a little camera shy? I sure, I'll show mine. There you go, Cameron. Got a girl. So uh, I wrote it down. I didn't make a chart, but it just explains how it's like grown. Uh, so oats, they start, they grow in a field and then they get harvested and then they get moved over to a factory and then they become a product and then they get sold at the store. That's really good. I like the granola bar edition too. I love granola bars, but that's, that's really well done. Thank you. Breakout room two. Um, okay, breakout room three with milk. Uh, you can go. Okay, hello. So I am Eugene and here is our flow chart on milk. So first, uh, there's a bunch of grass and shrubs and feed and stuff that the animals, cows or goats eat. 
and then they're milked. And then the milk goes into a big tank and is transported to a, the decreamerizer, as I call it. It's basically a factory where they take the cream out. And then uh, the cream goes <laughs> out the end to be made into all those other stuff, all that other stuff. Then the milk gets pasteurized and then it gets packed using some plastic from over here. And then it goes to the store and then it goes to the person who drinks it. That was well done. Thank you. Really good job, Eugene and Charlotte. I appreciate it. Nice work. Okay, so uh, for our last one for potatoes, Elizabeth, if you want to just unmute yourself and then say like two words so that you pop up and we can see your flow chart and then um, you can mute yourself again and the next person can present it. Here's your flow chart. I think it was Minnie and Claire going to speak to it, so I don't know if they can see it. So the potatoes are seeded and then they're put in the dirt and then they're dug up. They are cleaned and sorted and then they're baked and hauled. Then they go to like the market, a store or a processing plant. Then they're sold. And then they go on some, no, they're cut up boiled or baked and they're, then they're put on a plate and then they go on your mouth. Okay, that was great. Thank you guys, good teamwork. I'm glad we figured that out, very well done. Um, oh, no worries if anyone's late too. If you, I've got a few messages of people saying that they're late, which is no big deal. Um, this is gonna be recorded. So if you wanna watch the first half, it should be up in the next couple of days and you can watch the what you missed. Um, thank you, uh, Minnie. That was really good. Okay, uh, so let me share my screen again. Very well done, everybody. All right, so um, I do have uh, some of the keys here and we'll just go through them really, really quickly um, because you guys did a really good job and I actually liked your flow charts better than some of these. So um, here we have the eggs. So this, you guys got a really, did a really good job of catching the, or capturing the feed. Um, and then, yeah, we have like the cardboard flats where the eggs go in or the plastic that used to wrap them, anything used to clean the eggs before they go into the store and then to the customer. Um, and then we have milk. So we, uh, you guys did a good job of this too. I like the decreaming. Um, so we, yeah, you water and feed them. They go to milk processing and packaging, which is kind of what I think that you guys were getting at with that. Um, and the same thing, basically you need the plastic, uh, you need anything used for the milk containers. I actually think you guys had more steps, which was good. Um, and then we have oats. So this one was well done too. And um, here's just some other things. The other thing that they didn't put in this one that I liked what you guys had is that it can be made into other products other than just rolled oats made in a bag. So that was nice. Um, same kind of deal, all the packaging substances and things like that. And then potatoes. Um, the seeds we need. Uh, I like this one has um, cold storage, which sometimes happens with potatoes. Um, and then going and we don't because we don't really need as many packages with our potatoes here and often they're far, sold at like farmers markets and things like that too so uh, but it's you guys did a great job with your potato one okay so we have another activity um, before we end off tonight and this one this activity is called dream farm so we're going to go back into breakout rooms and I might make them a little bit smaller this time so that everyone can kind of participate. Um, and what you guys are going to do is you're going to come up with your dream Alberta farm. So you can make it as big as you want, as small as you want. You can have as many things produced in it as you want. Um, so you can have crops and animals. Um, pretend you have unlimited money so you can grow what you want. Uh, the only 
Um, the only things is that I want you to have at least one sustainable farm practice that your farm does. So if you don't remember what we talked about in those sustainable practices, you can ask and I'll come in and give you a little bit of hand. Or if you have some other sustainable practices I didn't talk about, you can include those. So your farm should at least have one of those. And you need to make sure you know what products your farm is going to produce. So that's one thing to have at the end of this is to have the sustainability factor, the products that your farm is going to produce and um, the all of the crops and the livestock have to be able to be grown successfully in Alberta. So if it's something that can't be produced in Alberta, um, don't include it in your farm. So only do things that you know can be grown in Alberta. And if you have questions about that, you can ask me or if you have parents around or maybe some of the older members might know too. Um, so that's what we're going to do for this one. Um, does, here, sorry, I'm just going to stop my screen. So just to say one more time, um, make sure your farm can be as big or as small as you want, but the things that you need to have, um, you need to have a list of the products on your farm, you need to have one sustainable practice that it does, and you need to have, um, it has to all be able to be grown in Alberta. So you can draw a picture of your farm if you want, you can make a list, however you want to record it. But you guys are all working together to make your farm. So um, it's going to be a farm with everybody, okay? Um, and I just, if does anyone have uh, any questions before we get started about this, before I put you in breakout rooms? There's none in the chat, Maddie, so. Okay, perfect. So I'll put you in and if you come up with questions, awesome. Um, like I said, these are gonna be a little bit smaller breakout rooms just so that uh, we can have a little more time to talk. Uh, let's do six. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys, what time is it? We'll take like 10 minutes in these breakout rooms. I don't wanna keep you much past six. So we'll do 10 minutes in these breakout rooms to make your farm and then we'll go over them. Okay, guys, so uh, everyone's back now. Um, and what we're going to do is we'll just go breakout room through breakout room and you guys can present um, on your farm that you made. And then we're I just have one more thing um, to talk about before we wrap up and then we're done for the night. So I'm excited to see what you guys came up with with farms. So uh, let's start with breakout room one. Um, that was Allegra, uh, Alicia, Ashlyn, Brooklyn, Holden, Peyton, Carson, Evangeline, Hazel, Joel, Miley, Presley, Royden, and Rail. I don't know who presented from that, but you can turn on your mic and present. I can present. So we have 20 quarters of land, three hired hands, a chicken coop, four barns, a dugout with trout, 200 cows, 24 chickens, both for laying and butcher, fruit trees, 24 pigs, donkeys. We have Australian shepherds, alpacas, sheep, border collies. We have about 12 cats. We have labs. Um, for crops, we have fruit trees, oats and corn, peas, barley, canola, wheat, a hay crop. And we also have corn and mustard. We have ranch horses, a garden with both fruits, a garden with vegetables and Saskatoons and blueberries. And I think that's it. Did you guys talk about a sustainable practice that your farm would do? Uh, we were gonna have pigs and butcher them to get bacon. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Awesome. And then you'd share it with your community, right? It'll be good. Okay. I'm sure you'll build healthy relationships, sustainable relationships with your community if you share bacon with them, if you, if you provide it to your local grocery store. Okay. Um, room two, you guys can go uh, Cameron and Ty, Ella, Kenzie, Haley, Izzy, Logan. There's a, a lot of names to read, but if you're in breakout room two, whoever's presenting, you go.
Cam, you were in that room, so maybe if you know who's supposed to be presenting. Um, so we have like a farmhouse, a chicken pen, a shop, a barn, a sheep pen, a shed to keep our machine machinery in. We have some crops, um, like a 15,000 acres, a pasture, a watering hole for the cows for in the pasture, um, a vineyard, and and equipment, just more equipment. And our products would probably, we would sell eggs and wool and green. That's awesome. Did you guys talk about any, what your sustainable practice would be? Maybe I missed it. Irrigation. Nice, awesome. Good work. That was great. Thanks, breakout room two. Okay, breakout room three. Um, you guys can go. That had Suzanne in it. So maybe Suzanne, if you know who's presenting. Well, we only had one brave person with their camera on, but everybody gives some input. So I think maybe they could tag team it and show their pictures if they want. I know Elizabeth, Eric, do you want to show us that picture of the Saskatoons and the lentils? <laughs> I just got the lentils and the ostrich. Um, well, there's the lentils. Oh, and good there's job. There's the ostrich. And then Elizabeth, do you want to share a couple things that we had? And, or Kennedy, I'm trying to remember all the names that were in there. Kennedy. There's the goat and there's the chicken and some Saskatoons and a pig and a bee. I feel like our animals, we were gonna have chickens and milk and beef cows and goats and pigs and bees and horses and ostriches. And our crops were going to be wheat, canola, lentils. We we're going to grow Saskatoon berries. And we're going to have barley and oats. And we're going to, for our products, we're going to have eggs, um, milk, um, Saskatoon berries, and we can make pies and jams. We're going to have pork and beef and honey. And our sustainable practice was going to be to have solar panels. Awesome. That's really good. Uh Thank you, breakout room three. Okay, breakout room four. Uh, Kaylee, Sierra, Eugene, Charlotte, Evelina, Jackson, Rebecca, and Rylan. Did anyone in that room want to say anything? I don't know if I can see. Okay. okay, breakout room four. Um, if someone wants to say something, message me in the chat and we'll go back to you. Um, um, Eugene had the piece of paper that had our plan on it. Okay, okay. Uh, Eugene, do you want to show the piece of paper? Or Rebecca, if you remember, you can talk though. I just let Eugene back in. I must have got kicked out. Oh. Okay, good to go. Okay, so for our presentation, oh, everything is backwards, that's a problem, but we have 35,000 hectares of stuff here with two big giant shelters for the goats, the cows, and the sheep. Our sustainable practice, which is, involves this, is pasture rotation, so it goes one, two, three, four, and then there's uh, we have chickens and quail over here with a big coop that is 100 hectares. And then we have a hay field, which is 3,000 hectares. And then a bunch of bridges. There's a river here, a bunch of bridges on it, a doghouse with some borticolias, a shed, a farmhouse, and the long road that goes across the side. Uh, is that everything? Yeah, that's everything.
Let me finish mine. Awesome. Thank you, Eugene. That was great. Thank you. Uh, breakout room four, I believe that was. Um, okay, breakout room. Okay, thanks. Okay, Charlotte. Oh, yeah, show us Charlotte really quickly. Yeah, sure. Charlotte has one too. So here are my goats and cows and sheep and horses and their big shelter. And then there's my dog over here. And then my cats, four, obviously, because I love cats. Obviously. Oh, wait, can you see? Right there in the tree. And then the house. And over here, there's sunflowers and hay. And then my quail and chickens and their little coop and pen. And I think that's everything. And my river and the driveway with the cars and the road. Awesome, thanks Charlotte, that's really good. You'll have to post that in the Google Classroom later so we can see the picture up close to it, okay? <laughs> okay, awesome you guys. All right, so let's do breakout room five. Um, you guys can go, if I don't know who's presenting in that one. Um, I was gonna present. Okay, so um, on our farm, we we didn't really say how big it was gonna be, but um, we have crops and we grow barley, alfalfa, alpha, and potatoes in them, and then we had cows, beef cows, and then we had um fish um and then and then we had the solar panels for our our um, resource thing um and yeah that's basically all we had that's awesome that's really really good thanks liam that was great thank you breakup room five okay um and room six you guys are the last one so uh you guys can present Okay, so we decided that we were gonna have um, what, 150 cattle, seven horses, <laughs> Nola, barley, and alfalfa. We're gonna have a barn and pasture. We're gonna have uh, 50 chickens, two dogs, five cats, a combine, semi-cedar square, um, eight grain bins, a house, tractor, two shops, cabin barn, and then for our, and then for the sustainable thing, uh, we're gonna have solar panels. Awesome! It was, thank you guys. That was really good. I really like that breakout room sex. I love all the solar panels too. Um, that's really great. Okay. Um. <laughs> Does anyone, right? Okay, I feel like that was an accident. Okay, um, so we are pretty basically done for the evening. The only thing I want to say, so um, this activity that we did, our dream farm activity, um, I've actually made a assignment for it in the Google Classroom. And so you can do a little, you have to do a little bit more for the assignment, just add a few more sustainable practices for your farm and actually draw it out. But a lot of you drew it out already. That's awesome. So um, everyone can draw out a farm, each person individually, and submit it to the assignment in the Google Classroom. And um, for everyone, if everyone who submits Submits an assignment is going to get entered into a draw to win a prize. So the um, oh, I'll send you the class. Send everybody the class code. Um, it's also I sent it in the email that you got or your parents got. Um, but let me send you the class code right now. Um, but yeah, go submit. Um, read the instructions and submit your farm. Uh, into the Google Classroom by next Wednesday. And everyone who submitted will get entered into a draw to win a prize. 
Uh, there's also a feedback form in the classroom for you to fill out to tell us how you think this went. So um, we're going to do two more of these. And so it really is really good for us to uh, get feedback so that we can make them even better moving forward. Um, I also there's some videos in the Google Classroom. Um, I put a couple other activities you can do in there. So it's worth checking out. Um, here's the class code. Oh, I just sent that to Ashlyn. Sorry, Ashlyn, I meant to send it to everybody. <laughs> um, uh, what is the prize? Um, we It'll be some sort of 4-H swag. We just haven't got it all collected yet, but it'll be um, some good 4-H goodies. I have to ask Suzanne more. <laughs> Maybe Suzanne can let us know, but um, we haven't got it all together yet, but I promise it'll be good. Yep. Is the thing over? Um, yeah, so that's it for the night, everyone. If you have more questions, you can stay on and ask. I'll be here. But um, other than that, thank you for coming. I had lots of fun. See you guys in a couple weeks for the next session. Bye. 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 Thank you for everything. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody.